It's the summer of 2020, and the gaming world watches the Xbox event with bated breath. Halo Infinite is what everyone wants to see. Master Chief returning to form. 343's project that has been pumped with hundreds of millions of dollars and thousands of hours by countless designers, artists, and programmers. But Infinite will still be divisive because there will still be segments of its community and the gaming space who will say, it is unlike Halo 3, or it's not Halo 2. There will still be endless conversations and arguments about where Infinite fits and just exactly how good is it. All of this is because Infinite has to take on the hundred-headed beast of the gaming world. Nostalgia. Today I wanted to talk about nostalgia in video games. Not in the games themselves, but as it surrounds the gaming space, the gaming identity, and gaming communities. So this video has two parts. The first part, I'm going to talk about what nostalgia is and what nostalgia is in gaming. And then the second part, I'm going to talk about is nostalgia a force for good in gaming? Or has it become corrupted, twisted, or even worse, exploited? In an era of stress and anxiety, when the present seems unstable and the future unlikely, the natural response is to retreat and withdraw from reality, taking recourse either in fantasies of the future or in modified visions of a half-imagined past. This quote is from the comic Watchmen, written in the 1980s, about a story set in the 1980s, about the Cold War, about Reaganomics, the war on drugs, Afghanistan, the Soviets, consumerism, an impending nuclear apocalypse. But I could have read this quote to you today and you might think it's about 2020. Because the concept of nostalgia hasn't changed that much in the past 30 years. Today, nostalgia is generally defined as a sentimental longing for the past, particularly in reference to how things used to be better. Video games have gotten to the point where huge parts of the demographic can wistfully remember blowing in N64 cartridges, configuring RAM to get their favorite game to run on PC, CD keys, dial-up internet and multiplayer games, and for many, this. But why do we get so nostalgic about these things? According to Professor Cardero out of the University of Cologne, nostalgic experiences can be a coping mechanism when dealing with stress, melancholy, or anxiety. It can help alleviate feelings of loss and sadness. Some researchers even make conclusions that those who have a greater tendency to be nostalgic have higher self-esteem, are more trustworthy of others, and suffer less from depression. That nostalgia can actually help our social interconnectedness. There's another important factor with nostalgia too, identity. Autobiographical memories are linked to the formation of the self. One study out of the University of Leeds in 2008 found that when given the opportunity to generate self-concepts and identities that are reflective of the self, people tend to generate memories from when that self-identity was formed. So if you are a gamer, um, if you associate video games with a part of your identity, you're going to remember a lot of those firsts as how they helped form that gaming gamer part of you. You're going to remember a lot more the first time you got a console as a present or you bought it yourself, saving up all of your allowance money. You're going to remember your first raid in World of Warcraft, your first running rampage in Halo 2 Online, or your first pentakill in League of Legends. All of these firsts help you form that part of your identity. So that first Smash tournament you won, that is going to help cement Super Smash Brothers as a part of your gaming identity, statistically. Another study points to how our peak preferences for objects like music, movies, video games, clothing styles, and so on happens when we are in the neighborhood of 20 years old. Additionally, another academic says that gaming nostalgia is even stronger than these other objects because unlike watching a movie of a hero beat up the bad guy, in games, we were the hero. The formation of identity spans from our first, from our youth, to our early adulthood. So for kids born in the 90s, where does Halo fall? Well, in 2001, I wasn't even 10 years old. When Halo 2 came out, I was solidly a tween. And then when Halo 3 came out in 2009, I was a teenager. 
So it makes sense that for the Halo games, I associate so strongly Halo with my gamer identity. And to most Reach searchers, they would say that these games are fundamental in that part of me that self-identifies as a gamer and that makes up my, I guess, overall identity as a gamer. But a lot of this is individualistic nostalgia or what they call reflective nostalgia and has nostalgia to do with me or or just with you when you hear the music from the ocarina of time or mario brothers or halo you're getting nostalgic but nostalgia can also exist on a broader level beyond the self and it often has to do with a national loss of identity Think of the Weimar Republic in the 1930s that gave rise to German nationalism. Think of the quote, make America great again. It's that again that invokes this nostalgia that we collectively have to make our society better by looking to the past. And you might think that this is just for the talking heads and the newsrooms and the political pundits. Well, let me tell you, we want to make gaming great again too. We understand what nostalgia is for the individual gamer, so how does this broader nostalgia look in gaming? Um, that's a great question. One thing I realized when researching this topic and trying to answer this question is that there are so many variables and angles to consider that are probably each fact probably deserves a whole video essay to itself to try to unpack. So instead, I just want to give you some broad facts about some trends that have happened in the past decade and maybe yourself you can draw a conclusion about how if you agree that this could be nostalgic or if this is something else and how it all fits in trying to answer this question. When Splatoon was released in 2015, it was the first new intellectual property developed by Nintendo's Entertainment Analysis and Development Division in over a decade. When Overwatch was released in 2016, it was Blizzard's first new intellectual property released in over a decade. In 2018's E3, Bethesda Game Studio announced Starfield, its first new intellectual property in 25 years. When looking at all the Game of the Year nominations at the Video Game Awards from 2010 to 2019, 34 out of 52 were either remakes or sequels. Nearly 66% of games that were considered the cream of the crop by critics were not new properties, but a part of some already established franchise. At the VGAs in 2010 and 2011, all Game of the Year nominations came from sequels. In 2019, only two out of the six nominated games were from existing franchises, one notably a remake. Every year we have new remakes, remasters, re-releases, and repackages. Understanding the nuanced difference between Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered and Final Fantasy 7 Remake is important, but it still comes from a principle of re-experiencing something that was already pre-existing. And then lastly, when we look at the Xbox games showcase in particular, but it was there for the PlayStation 1 too, and you watched the chat of any of the live streams, there were repeated comments like skip, L, or F whenever new games were shown. And in the metrics of trailer views since the Xbox games showcase, Halo Infinite's viewership engagement is greater than all other games combined. You might say that this is because Halo is such an old, established, and popular franchise, but that's really only going to prove my point. In Watchmen, Adrian Veidt's brand, his consumer product, was called Nostalgia. Characters used and bought and sold Nostalgia. Nostalgia was a physical, tangible merchandise. While the new entry in the Halo franchise might not be called Halo Nostalgia, much of the conversation around the latest entries in massive franchises is about how they link and build upon the past. Returning to the world of Master Chief is, like to many people, returning to your childhood. Returning to your formative years where these objects helped make up your identity, distinguished you from the crowd, defined your friends in high school and early adulthood, and in some small part, made up a part of you. So you better believe nostalgia is a part of marketing and game development and consumerism, and in turn, how it is negatively affecting these objects that have helped define us. Indisputably, AAA games are now a battleground of consumer rights versus shady, exploitive, and predatory practices. 
but often gamers want to look backwards to a time when this didn't exist instead of looking to a future that could be better. We have to be careful when we become angry, ambulance chasing ranters of the present that yearn for the past. Because gaming really has come a long, long way. Video games are the most diverse, inclusive, and accessible they've ever been. So when we lambast the present day circumstances of gaming and look back into our gaming past at these formative and quote unquote simpler times, we have to realize it may have been more pleasant for us, for me, maybe for you, but not for everyone. There are vulnerable communities throughout the 90s and 2000s that were simply not present or even considered in video games. We have to remain vigilant about remakes and remasters because as one writer at Technoraptor puts it, Remasters, remakes, and classic collections are essentially made to sell you the same thing you loved as a kid again on a new platform. And it's mostly successful because a majority of gamers are trying to recapture those feelings that they had when they were younger. A part of me understands and appreciates that they made the Final Fantasy VII Remake. They say it's a great game, but a part of me can't help but feel, why couldn't they have made Final Fantasy XV instead? and have made it good. Are they going to make Final Fantasy 16 great? Why are we investing so many resources in rekindling the past rather than making a new Final Fantasy 7 experience? Because what is troubling is that you can replace Final Fantasy 7 with Resident Evil 2, with the Master Chief Collection, with Link's Awakening, with the Shadow of Colossus, with Resident Evil 3, and with the upcoming Mafia 1. Why is the gaming sphere fixated on making already great games great again? Now I get it. Gaming preservation is important. Game accessibility is important. But we have to recognize and be aware of our individualistic nostalgia seeping into the broader culture. We don't want to get so nostalgic that gaming evolves into a place where we hate on the present, idolize the past, reuse old and washed up tropes, and never move on. We should want to move the medium forwards. This is an impossible task if the future of gaming means going to the past. This can make nostalgia a really dangerous emotion in video games into the gamer identity. And I don't want to say, don't be nostalgic, because as we've talked about, it can have really positive effects for the individual. And sometimes we need to rekindle the past to deal with all of the stress and burdens of today. I get it. But I just want us all to be cautious and thoughtful when we get too much of that. And when we start to all get nostalgic so collectively. Because, you see... I lied to you. Yeah, I did. I'm sorry. That quote from Watchmen that I used towards the beginning of this video is actually misquoted. Goodreads doesn't know that. Somebody looking up quotes from Watchmen won't know that. A nostalgic reader of Alan Moore's comic isn't perhaps going to remember that. This is the actual quote spoken by Adrian Veidt. It seems to me that the success of the campaign is directly linked to the state of global uncertainty that has endured for the past 40 years or more. In an era of stress and anxiety when the present seems unstable and the future unlikely, the natural response is to retreat and withdraw from reality, taking recourse either in fantasies of the future or in modified visions of a half-imagined past. No longer does it seem to be thoughtful commentary on the human psyche, does it? In fact, when we read now as it was actually written, it's a lot darker. It's about Vite commenting on how his nostalgia branding campaign is successful because the world is unstable and uncertain. It's about how the most intelligent man in the world exploited human society's nostalgia to sell us stuff, to make billions of dollars. It's an easier pill to swallow if I only told you the thoughtful, poignant part of this quote from Moore's Watchmen. It's almost kinder to remember the good parts. It makes returning to something old a lot safer, a lot more comfortable. But we should not regress. We should not regress in gaming because of that. Moving past beloved franchises might be difficult because we don't know what could come. But if we don't take risks in our industry, We're only going to be stuck in a cycle of looking to the past, to games we've already played, and experiences we've already had, rather than forging ahead into the great unknown.